Hi, this video is about binary trees, a data structure just a little bit more complicated than lists. Let's start. What are binary trees? Well, a binary tree is either empty or it contains an element and it has two subtrees, the left one and the right one. I'll just write what I said. This is only a little bit more complicated than a list because, as you probably remember, a list is something that is either empty or has an element and a tail. The only difference is that now we have a second substructure. To illustrate the kind of things that we can do with binary trees, I will implement two functions that convert uh, between trees and lists. First, let's start with a tree and construct a list that contains its elements in what is called symmetric order. This means that the elements in the list are written such that the one in the left subtree come before the root, which comes before the elements in the right subtree. There are two ways of implementing this, corresponding to a fold without an accumulator and corresponding to a fold with an accumulator. The one without an accumulator is simpler to do, but is less efficient, so I'm going to do the one with an accumulator. The function that traverses the tree will uh, accumulate the elements seen so far. The function will traverse the tree by looking first at the left substructure, then at the current element, and then at the right substructure. And it will remember the elements seen the other way than we want them because it's easy to prepend things to a list but hard to put to append things to a list the last seen element is going to be at the beginning of the accumulator so then we'll have to reverse everything when we get to the very end When we get to a branch, the first thing to do is to visit the left branch. Then we record the current element, the root of the current tree. And then using this as an accumulator, we visit the right subtree. To start with, we have an empty accumulator. We have not yet seen any element. We visit tree, the tree that we've been the, the tree that we've been given, and we reverse everything at the very end. Let's see if this compiles. Okay. Now the second function that I want to do is essentially the inverse. Given a list containing the symmetric order of a, a tree or the in-order traversal of a tree, construct the tree. Problem is that there are multiple trees that have the same in-order traversal, so I'm just going to construct all of them. First, we need to pick the root of the tree and then recursively we will construct all the possibilities for the elements to the left and all the possibilities for the elements to the right. To pick this root we have to loop through the list and remember the elements that we've seen so far because those are the ones that will be to the left.
We'll see later what goes in here. So access is simply an accumulator that remembers the elements seen so far. Now we add the second accumulator which will contain the trees whose in order traversal is the uh, uh, list we are given and moreover whose root comes from the elements seen so far, that is from excess. When we get to the end we just return the accumulator. Otherwise we need to construct recursively all the possibilities for the left subtree These are done from the elements seen so far and we need to remember that the x's are reversed compared to the list we are given. Also we recursively construct the possible trees on the right on the right of y, y is the element that we are currently considering as a possible root. And then we need to build all the trees that have y as a root, a subtree from ls and a right subtree from rs. And for that we need to look at all pairs of elements from ls and rs. So we write a separate function that l constructs all possible pairs. So by the way this one should be recursive. it takes two lists and it should give us all possible pairs. So we need to iterate over access and construct all the pairs starting with x. To construct all the pairs starting with x we need to iterate over y's Now we have x and y and we can construct a pair. Uh, of course this will give us a list of lists because the pairs is, are going to be slotted by the x value but we can just concatenate all those lists into one big one. Now notice that this construction of a pair is just one of many possibilities of combining two elements so we could just parameterize this function by a way to combine two elements let's call it f now we notice that this whole expression here is just f partially applied to x and we use the function we just wrote well I just wrote to combine the elements of ls and rs into a big list of trees what do we get? here well we get a left tree a right tree and we need to construct a tree whose root is y these trees should be prepended to the accumulator the accumulator contained all the trees constructed so far and now we constructed also the trees that have y as a root and we keep going to look at the rest of the list now let's see what happens uh, when we're given an empty list oh. actually I need to have a, an argument here when we're given an empty list we should return a list with exactly one tree which is a leaf that's the only possibility and as you can see I never constructed any leaf here so it must be that a special case was not treated and indeed if we think about what this loop will do 
uh, with the empty list it will just return an empty list which is wrong so for the empty list we need to return a leaf and otherwise we start with no tree and we build the trees when we visit all the list using the loop function okay that was a lot of code let's see if it still compiles no it does not compile because This one says it has type a list of lists. Oh. Okay. So let's see if it also does what it's supposed to do. Oh. generated lots of trees it's a little bit hard to read this but what we can do is just pick one at random and check that the numbers appear in order one two three one two three four okay seems to be okay a more thorough test that we could do is to have some function just given a list computes all the trees corresponding to that list and for each tree computes the corresponding list and checks that all of those are equal to x so we have a list map sorry so first we compute the trees then for each of the trees we compute the li the list and then we check that all the elements are the same as the original list okay and then just to run this we say assert check one two three four five let's say maybe uh, another assertion that says something with some repeated elements also maybe not sorted so it's different now let's see if this compiles and runs line 23 Okay, I'm making many mistakes, it's late, I guess I'm tired. Blah blah, okay. It runs and no assertion fails. So just to make sure that the assertion actually works, we can change it to something that should fail. And yes, we see that it did, does indeed fail. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. Two things that you might want to think about. One is, notice that this function of in order has a structure that is very similar to how I implemented in a previous video of the listing of all permutations. You could look at that one and try to figure out what are the common parts and if they 
would be extracted in a function that gets parameterized by the differences. Another thing that you might want to think about is what's the performance of this function? How much space that does it use? How much time does it take? Whether it's wasteful in any way and how could that be improved? Okay, that was all.